Hey folks, so today doing a little unboxing. I just picked up a pair of boots. Uh, my old ones uh, made by Lorito were getting pretty worn out. So I figured it was about time to get a new set. Um, decided to go a little bit up market from where I was before. These are Tacovas, And I ordered ones called the Earl. Um, I already opened the box a little bit, but I haven't really gone into anything. Um, what's really cool is when I open the box, they've got a pre-addressed return label, so you don't have to pay anything. And then they've got a little boot care pamphlet that was actually really nice. And I, I have to say I'm very, very happy with the packaging. Um, I don't normally geek out on packaging, but uh, this was... It, it feels like quality. So... I open that up. Okay. Um, looks like is this came with a koozie. All right, that's pretty cool. And these are the boots. Okay, these are Tacova's The Earl, which are a roper style boot with a medium heel. Um, everything's Goodyear Welt, so it can be resold. And these are. The, co the color is called goat skin, and I imagine, based on what they said on the site, it is actually goat skin leather. They also have bovine leather, which is their more normal thing, but I read up on the company. I saw their ads all over the place on Facebook and figured they were just another you know, random fashion boot brand, but uh, looking at some of the reviews and things people were saying, it looks like it's actually a very nicely built boot. Um, not sure how it'll hold up based on uh, the amount of hard use that I get with them, but I figured I'd try them. I wanted something new. Um, I have to say, I am so far very impressed. I like the color. Definitely got that high-end quality it looks like you can see here looks like maybe one or two stitches might have skipped a little nothing crazy though right I like the fact that I can still see the pins in the bottom okay pretty nice it's a stacked leather sole and I'm pretty excited for it um, pretty firm leather. Let's see how the insole looks. Yeah, I got. I'm a little tough to find boots for because I wear a nine and a half wide, and they are incredibly difficult to find. So my brands were limited. Feels like I'm sticking my hand in here. Feels like a very good quality foot pad. Bonded pretty nicely. All the stitching looks fantastic. Let's see if we can get that to focus there. Yeah, stitching looks very nice. It's all double stitched. Good reinforcement. Very stiff leather. I'm actually very surprised by this. Maybe I'm too used to... The Lorito boots I had were only real leather for the bottom section. The, uh, I don't know the proper name for it because I don't know a ton about boots, but like this shaft here on the Loritos was some sort of synthetic, it was almost pleather that had been stiffened. This, this is, this is definitely real leather all the way through, which is what it's advertised as. Let's see what it says here. Oh, that's just a solid card. Okay. Let's see what else we got in here. I bet there's probably nothing else. But yeah, it's just another, just the other half, you know, the other half of the pair. Um, so very impressed. I'll be putting some mink oil on these tonight, and well, I should say I'm not going to be putting the mink oil on them tonight. I got to break them in around the house first, uh, but then I'm going to put some mink oil on once they're broken in. That way, I can start wearing them and see how they hold up. All right, well, as a comparison to the Tacovas, I just brought out my old boots here. Uh, these are a set of Loritos. I don't remember the 
trade name for them. But uh, if I remember correctly, they're a uh, they're under the umbrella of the Dan Post Boot Company. Um, as you can see, this one the heel starting to separate a little bit from kicking them off. These have got about three to four years worth of use on them, um, and even though for the most part they're still usable, they're definitely seen better days. Um, the leather has aged very nicely on the bottom section here, but what I was talking about before is this is why I'm not really going to bother re-soling them. Get this to focus here. There we go. All right, you can see on there whatever this synthetic material is. It is cracking, um, probably because it's some sort of polymer. So the UV probably got to it, along with the lack of flexibility in the material itself. It's whatever it is, it's really thin and it's over a cloth layer. So um, these boots are not waterproof anymore because of that. I have no way to prevent that from worsening. Um, I did treat this with mink oil the same way that I would the leather but it's just not worth saving at this point. Um, so these are basically going to be my shit kickers for now. But you can see, these are very different. These ones have the uh, riding heel, but they're well worn. And you can see all the stitching is worn off in places. And uh, they've served me very well. I've had two or three pairs of these over the uh, past maybe 10 years or so um, they've had they hold up very well they're comfortable but uh, I needed something with a lower heel and I wanted to go up market a bit because this is more like a hundred and twenty hundred and thirty dollar boot um, which for the price was very good uh, for those of you who are wondering exactly which boot this was this is the Laredo 6771 um, so these were actually, uh, I think they're called harness boots. They had a, like a little chain harness on them when I got them, but I took that off. Um, I got them because I like the look of these. I'm not a fan of highly decorated, um, flashy boots. I just like something that's good and solid, and it shines up well. Um, so you can see the leather on this did age very well. Um, as far as leather treatment, I swear by mink oil. It just works great. Um, I am partial to this Ariat brand too. Um, I like their boots as well, but unfortunately they don't have many offerings in my shoe size. So I don't really have any Ariat boots, but I do buy their products. Um, I am particularly fond of their uh, mink oil from the fact that it goes on pretty clear. It doesn't have a lot of color, uh, color change. And this container will last me probably five six years um i don't know either what uh th this is mildly scented i believe um it's a familiar scent i don't know exactly what it is but it's very pleasant um it's not intrusive or anything and it goes away after you put it on your boot the scent doesn't last very long um it's great stuff if you happen to know what this scent is please let me know in the comments um because I am going nuts trying to remember it. It is a familiar scent. So that is there. Um, definitely recommended. I just put that on with a rag. And as you can tell here, where the boot comes in contact with my shoes, shines up really nice. And the rest of it, I don't really use polish that often. But uh, you can tell these boots have seen some hard use. Uh, so that's what we've got here, and we'll have an update on the Tacovas uh, probably in a couple months. All right, so it's now about three months later. It's May 1st, which is almost three months to the day since I got these Tacovas in the mail. And uh, I have to say, I am incredibly impressed. Um, what I'm seeing so far, these boots will last me a very long time, longer than the Loritos. Um, probably so because I will be able to have them resold when the time comes. Um, I'm very, very happy with this purchase. They're definitely worth the money. So, I'll just walk you through everything there is to say about the boots. So, starting at the top, um, 
one thing I found is these boots took a lot of oil to get supple. Um, when they came out of the box, these were stiff as can be. Um, and it took, a little, it took quite a while to break them in, which I attribute not towards a quality issue. I believe it is firmly due to the fact that these are made out of really high quality thick leather, um, which just requires more oil and more time to break it. So, that being said, um, what I did to prep these and get them broken in is I originally started with my normal thing, which is just a coat of mink oil, okay? Just a nice, heavy coat of mink oil, let it sit for a couple days. Um, that actually didn't work to soften up the boots, and I'll say that's probably because the mink oil is a paste versus a oil that would penetrate. Um, so... What I ended up doing was I used some saddle soap, got the excess mink oil off since it wasn't doing anything, and then what I did was I used a product that was given to me called Huber's Shoe Oil. Um, I applied that. It worked very well, but it was really nasty stuff to work with. It smells terrible, but it does a great job. Um, so I used that, and that definitely helped to soften up the leather and get it to the point where I could work with it a little bit. Um, so once I used that stuff, and it, it sort of paved the way so that I could then apply my mink oil um, to get it the rest of the way. So in the end, I had a coat of the Hubert shoe oil and two coats of mink oil. And that got these to the point where they were really starting to feel nice and supple and perfect as far as being ready to walk in and break in. Um, the break-in period took somewhere between a week and a week and a half. Um, I wore them every day. Um, that's a lot longer than it normally takes me to break a pair of shoes or boots in, but in this case, like I said, these were, this is super heavy duty leather. Um, these are not a light pair of boots. Um, they're, he they are heavy duty, even though it is goat skin leather. These have multiple layers, even in the shaft, and, uh, they are not going to fall apart on you. I, that much I have determined. Um. So they did take a little bit of time to break in and really be perfectly comfortable. Um, I will say now that they are broken in, these are the most comfortable pair of boots I've ever had. They are fantastic. Um, I will definitely be buying another pair of these, um, probably with a different heel, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, these are the goat skin leather. Okay, as you can see, these boots have darkened up a bit. Um, in an effort to shine these up a little bit, I purchased a new product that I hadn't used before, um, which was shoe cream. I'm not normally one to polish my boots, but I wanted to see if I could get a good shine out of them. Um, so I purchased the shoe cream, and it didn't really quite match the color, and ended up darkening up the boots a bit. Um, what I'm hoping is, is that as long as I don't reapply that stuff anytime soon, that as I continue to use them and clean them, the fake coloring will start to disappear and these will go back to that nice light tan that we had when I first took them out of the box. Um, that's what I'm hoping. Either way, I don't mind the darker color, but I did prefer the lighter color that they were out of the box. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing I've noticed with these, uh, because they're goat skin leather, they scuff a lot easier than the bovine leather does. Um, I noticed that because I have a really bad habit um, because I work in a school and I've got kids who unfortunately being 7th and 8th graders aren't really hygienic. I generally try to avoid touching door handles in my building so I end up using my boots to open doors. Um, what that ends up meaning is the toe box of my boot takes a hell of a beating, as you can see here, um, and scuffs up a lot because I basically use my boot to push and pull the doors. Uh, I don't kick them or anything, but I use my, you know, the toe of my boot to kind of open them up because I really don't want to touch the door handles and have to wash my hands every 30 seconds during the day. Um, you'd be amazed at some of the gross stuff that you see kids do, and frankly, even adults are pretty bad sometimes. Um, so I noticed that, um, but the, on the plus side, even though they scuff easily, it doesn't take a whole lot 
for the to make the, the scuff go away. Um, all you, frankly, after that initial treatment, all I've really done to these is I just brush them once a week at the you know at the end of the week. I come home from work, spend maybe ten minutes. I just give them a good brushing off. I don't apply anything new, um, and na the natural oils from the goat skin leather just kind of seep themselves back out and spread over it to uh, help hide the scuff. It is still there and you can still see it, but uh, as you brush it, it cleans up really nicely. So I've been very happy with that on these boots. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't realize when I purchased these, I normally have a, you know, the top section of my foot here. Normally I've always had boots that had stitching here which I do prefer over what I've got without the stitching right now on these, but that's just a stylistic thing. Um, I don't use a shoe tree. I know everyone will probably give me some crap about that, but I do not use a shoe tree. I don't have time for that. I don't feel that it's really that necessary if you take care of your boots. Um, so yes, I've got some wrinkling here and all that kind of stuff, but it's still nice and supple. Nothing's cracking. Nothing's in bad shape. Um, what I have been continuing to treat, even though the rest of the, you know, the upper of the boot is good, is the soles and the leather on the heel. Um, I've noticed when these get wet, they turn very light white very quickly. Um, if I'm walking in heavy rain or anything like that, they lose pretty much everything almost instantly. So I, when, you know, at least once a week, I have been putting mink oil onto the stacked leather sole and heel just to keep the color there and to keep them protected. Um, so there's that. Now as far as the sole and heel itself, they've been holding up very well. Um, I wear my boots really hard and I've worn these extra hard in the three months that I've had them just to see how much they'll hold up against. Um, I'm on my feet all day, normally it's just on the smooth concrete floor in my classroom in the shop, but uh, I've also recently been doing a lot of security work for school events, so I've been walking around on rough concrete and asphalt quite a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've been walking around on rough concrete, asphalt quite a bit, which really does a number on leather soles. Um, that being said, these have held up very nicely. They ha it hasn't even chewed down into the stitching yet. Um, which I have to say I'm very impressed by. I was expecting these to be in a lot worse shape by now, um, considering the fact that most of the sporting events I've done, I'm walking around on rough surfaces for, you know, three hours at a time, nonstop. Um, I've probably walked, I want to say between, you know, 30 miles, I'd say, in this, in these shoes, if I'm not counting the, you know, little bits that I'm walking around the classroom. Um, so they've held up very well, and I will say they are extremely comfortable now that they're broken in. These are the most comfortable pair of shoes I think I've ever had. Um, very impressed. So nice job there, Tacovas. Um, the, the rubber on the heel has been working very nicely. Um, it is wearing just a little bit already here where my foot first hits the ground as I walk. That's normal. Every pair of shoes I've ever had does that. Um, you saw on the Loritos, it was kind of the same deal. So that's happening here as well. Um, as far as waterproofing, they've been doing really well. I haven't applied any oil to these yet since uh, this past week, but I am. I think I'm just at about the point where I'm going to put just a light coat of mink on it just to you know, maintain nothing crazy. Um, they've held up amazingly and I'm very happy with them. So I'll tell you right now, final thoughts to Kova's excellent buy. Excellent buy. I cannot speak highly enough about these boots. Um, I am still on the fence about the goat leather. For a dress boot, the goat leather I think would be fantastic. For a working boot, I'm not sure I'd go with the goat. I'd go with the bovine, which most people would have said anyway. Um, Definitely, the one thing I'm interested to try next is I think I'll be buying for sure another pair of these. 
but I don't know if I'm going to go with the Roper heel again, even though it makes it a lot more easy to walk in. Um, I'm so used to walking with a riding heel that these almost feel kind of weird to me. I feel like I'm stomping around instead of just walking normal. So the next pair I buy is definitely going to be a riding heel. Um, we'll try them out and we'll see. I'll probably make a video when that time comes. So thanks for tuning in. Excellent buy. Tacovas, nice job. Um, if you have any suggestions on boot brands that you think I should try, please drop a comment or send an email, and I will be happy to try and see what I can look at. Um, I'm totally self-funded. I don't have a Patreon. I have nothing yet. So, you know, if you come at me, hey, you know, distract you, try some Lucchese's. Not going to happen, guys. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Um, you know, maybe once the subscribership starts to go up a little more, we'll be able to try something like that. Maybe I can get a Patreon started, but, uh, um, I can't afford to go that high up market. Um, however, there are some really cool things coming in the works, um, vehicle related, uh, gun related. There's a lot of stuff going on, so we'll have some pretty cool content coming up. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.